Remember silent witness, presence. There's a time to run towards the roar. And in a way, we're being asked to do it as a group because it takes the collective imagination of people to imagine a new next worldview. If you focus on the end, your means will get screwed up. If you focus on the means, meaning have faith, that's where trust comes into play. Faith in your instinct, in the expression of love. If you believe that love is the superior consciousness, then you have to trust it. You have to extend faith to your spirit, to the truth. Love is interchangeable with truth. People misunderstand that. They've been misled. It's not their fault. But the problem is that people have a belief that unconditional love means unconditional fluff. Try substituting the word love with the word truth and then say it. Unconditional truth. Love doesn't go around and act fluffy duffy. Love does what's appropriate in a given moment, but it knows. Trust love in the moment. When I say the ego is the problem, what I mean by that is believing that you are your ego. For to believe that you are your ego means that you have allowed society to tell you what you are in a prison system, and that's wrong. Your objective is for you to tell society, yourself, what you are, regardless of its input. That is what honesty is, where you express yourself, how you truly feel, what you know, regardless of your reality. You are not where you are. You are not what you experience. You are the experiencer. If you let your experience change you and tell you what you are, then you become the experience and that's how you get caught in the web. If you're constantly running from pain and chasing pleasure and think that that is somehow your identity, you're in the web. This is very important very important. We came here to change the narrative. We're on our way. That's what we have to We're do. Here. There has been a shift in the consciousness. And I do believe the answer to all of these things is free thinking and truth and God and community standing up for themselves and changing the general consensus. Because to a degree, although we talk about people who run the world, to a degree we run the world. Who's in charge of the world? Well, I like to say, well, we are. We see the world as we see ourselves. We can be true to God, we can be true to ourselves, we can tell the truth. Meditate, man. The more you turn inward, the more divine guidance you'll get. All is connected. When you manifest out of love, love takes priority. It will manifest correctly whether you understand it or not. So your mind creates your reality. So if you're just mind ignoring input from spirit, you can potentially create very bad things. If you submit to the truth, which is what it comes down to, people, it's not falling on your knees and worshiping as some enslaved servant. Serving God? What? You don't serve God. You wouldn't be without God. Serve God? What? As you experience deeper states of consciousness, that the world that you perceive is transformed by your inner transformation. You see? The kingdom of God is inside of you. Another way you can look at that is the only truth you're going to find is when you go inside of yourself. The real intelligence of life resides in the heart. The heart has its own light and that in the dark times, and I assume everybody got the memo that these are the dark times. In the dark times, we need the light of the heart. There's a way in which a genuine happiness in life now probably requires a willingness to feel the sorrow of the world. You might call it the sorrow of the earth, or the cry of the earth. Earth is an anagram for heart, swimming through the heavens. It is always the core of the system. Core means heart. What's the point of all the chaos, all the black, all the lead, if it's not to make gold, not to create art, not to make content, to enlighten others, to enrich other people's lives? Yeah, the only thing that can explain where we live is that the earth's a plane and Everything's electromagnetic. You live in like an etheric field that's a toroid. I'm telling you now, you will rewrite the code 
because it's amorphous. It's the same thing as deja vu. Deja vu is you experiencing something that you've already lived because outside the construct, time doesn't exist as we know now. The Logos is the creator of these worlds. The Logos, Logos means word. Word in Latin is verb. Verb is vibrate vibration vibration is sound reverberate what also proves flat earth is the torus field when you understand magnetism in the torus understand the torus and the torus will set you free and so the idea throughout life is to get more and more connected to that deep self and get more and more access to the inner gifts and learn how to bring them up and express them and put them out into the world because that's what makes the world beautiful and meaningful the beginning of all things is light and the end of all things is light. In between is that light expressing itself as a holographic image and that's the illusion because light has no dimensions. All right. So right now we are living in a illusory sort of experimental transitioning place to sort of calibrate our light. Remember lightning its awareness. And that's what this whole existence was supposed to be about. That is the role you chose to play. But the real individual inside you, the immortal within. You transform as that which was casted down rose up. Now, don't it sound like a seed in the ground? See, what the father did was put the seed in the ground of the earth, which is the woman. And what rose up was the human. Because when you put a seed in the ground, you don't grow a seed. You grow a tree. One love transformation is what we're talking about today everything is transforming are you imagine a seed saying i never change imagine a sperm cell saying i never change hey well you wouldn't be here now silly so your mind should constantly exercise critical thinking so that these changes may naturally take place it's getting powerful and strong we don't understand that the mind is a spiritual muscle that must be fed by critical thinking that's how you lift weights mentally and at that point the process of transformation start the caterpillar can't crawl back out the cocoon the only thing that can exit that cocoon is a butterfly and that's the only way nature gonna have it when the sperm went into that stargate called an egg the only thing that nature would allow out of that was a human you will not come out of here sperm see there are certain lines that we cross in the universe that once you cross them transformation must take place otherwise you just ain't gonna be allowed to cross them now how bad do you want to cross them somebody want you to stay the same and they telling you don't cross the line in your thinking stay inside of your box because they don't want transformation to take place on a collective level see the caterpillar couldn't live in the sky until it came out of the cocoon it made its cocoon on the ground and that cocoon turned out to be a lunch pad for the butterfly we're all elites and we're all supreme and we all run our own worlds this world is a result of your thoughts so be the change that you want to see this is your world the world is yours we are our energy not our body everybody got to die you know why every seed got to go in the ground you know why everybody got to go in the ground every seed can't grow less it go in the ground but that hole that they gonna dig for you don't look at it as a grave look at it as a lunch pad to release something far greater than what you can imagine you're great everything's happening for a reason the reason is transformation whether you like it or not energy can't stay the same but it re must remain in motion now let's get back to the sacred geometry here today a ripple in the pond of reality to put a tear in the fabric of earth i'm very much on board with multi-dimensional -dimension realities as long as we're talking about those realities being different frequencies of experience because, you know, I mean, you already know the electromagnetic spectrum is something we only experience like 5% of it. There's 95% of the energies that can be optically viewed around us that we cannot see. You've pretty much awakened. And once you awaken, the construct no longer has any power over you. That is when you get to be, begin expressing your power. This is when the co-creator relationship kicks in.
it cannot kick in for anybody in the collective because the construct will build for you once it realizes that it's not if it, you're not going to let let it force you to build for it there's a relationship dynamic here once you're a free thinker you're free you're free to be anybody you want and do whatever you want despite the opposition learn the seven virtues and abstain from the seven vices and you will become good which is god which is godly and you will ascend you will see the world through the through these new eyes through god's eye the universal eye everything makes sense you're good good to people because you start understanding that you are everything you are god experiencing what it's like to be a human an interesting symbolic report for it tells us that in building our own temple the temple of character the temple of life we must work from a divine plan and we must have a certain inner communion with that plan. We must offer ourselves to the fulfillment of that plan. And the major works that we perform should be consistent with the grand purpose, which is the building of the temple of human character and happiness, with the source of all purpose and all plan. We're dealing with programming, and if you have truly awakened and divorced yourself from, from the collective, if you've actually reached that point, there is no way you can un do what you've done if you have broke if you have broke free from that programming you can't undo that you've awakened you've become a problem to the construct because from the perspective of the construct you're a problem you're in error you're not following the protocols you're not subject to dungeon programming negative default programming has no effect on you we are all spirits in a body we are all spirits in a body 369 is energy frequency vibration energy is your soul frequency is your mind and vibration is your body you have a soul mind and a body a three a six and a nine nine is ether which is your soul six is frequency which is your mind and three is body which is vibration you have to learn discernment which comes through the christ essence and the heart to observe more in an amazing time we are in we get to witness the total collapse and destruction of this fucking matrix experience silence energy peace presence joy gratitude we are God's dream. We are God's dream. Everything that we everything that we do, God does on an external level. We can only observe what we create. Same thing. God can only observe his creation. That's why it's not that I'm God the creator. I'm an extension and expression of God. I am his creation. I am God. I'm made in his image. But people are like, no, you can't say the G word. You can't be that. You can't know you are. You're externalizing your power when the power is yours. And when you start to mess with that power and you learn to master it, you, you make waves in the world. And I'm not doing it in a malicious way. I'm not asking to be worshiped. I'm trying to help you get to the same place that I am so that way we can radiate this frequency to everyone. We're becoming truer and truer and more closer to our true self. And we, we're not the same person who we was yesterday. Each day is a revelation, a revealing of a, of a new layer of the self. It's not there, it's within you. Woo, El Payaso, you got some, you got some lines, brother. Real talk. Everything's all right. Everything's okay. If it doesn't know, they cannot fool you. But you know what? Who needs to come to you? You need to come to yourself. They want you to externalize when you need to internalize. You need to go inward. When you go inward, that's when the real work happens. That's when you really see. Turning inward, there's an infinite amount of potential. There's an infinite amount of source information. That's why when people meditate, they just start knowing stuff. These are titles. These are words. There's a source to these words where you all meet as one, where you are home together. The only reason you know of you and me, this and that, is because of this presence. Love is the answer because it loves itself so much it's granted you the experience to know family, to know these things. If you're looking to truly awaken to who you are, the dream world serves its purpose. Everything is divine. Everything happens for a reason. Omnia divina, all is divine. A thing in its seed form has not manifested to its ultimate point of glory. And a human is the seed form of what we really are. And when we get attached to the seed form, of course there's gonna be something in us that say, well, I know I can always be better than this. Just like a caterpillar saying, well, I know there's something greater I can be, and that's called a butterfly. But if the caterpillar get attached to just being a caterpillar, it'll never spin a cocoon, it'll never transform. So 
this transformative experience will unlock all of these gifts because every mistake you made in your life, it led you right here to this awakening. You know this already. They're dreams. Sleep is the cousin of death. So you are shown every night how this is bound to appear and disappear right before your eyes. But you are also shown how a whole new experience can take place. And there is no actual off switch. You're always having an experience. You're always producing an experience, whether awake or asleep, eyes open or closed, because you are the experience. You are the, the it itself. You are life itself. Because all of us is an individual experience of the Most High. All of us is on a trip right now on our own journey in the cosmos as individuals from that one single source or that one primordial vibration that started it all. That's the I, the I am. That's the Alpha and Omega. We call it the all-seeing I. And that refers to the all-seeing I of the Most High as well as the all-seeing I, meaning you. It's the E-Y-E -E and the capital I. The book of Eli is really the book of I. This is the book of life, what I'm giving you, or the Holy Grail. When you say Eli, it's L I, the I. The all seeing I is the detached capstone that hovers above the cosmos and sees all from the artist's view. That's the point of singularity. It's deeper than what we think, this reality, man. Just like Plato's cave, at some point you realize that you're in the prison of your own mind and you have tasted the possibility of freedom. Now that first taste is when you break out of the structures of reality that your mind has created. We're our own saviors. Get into the place where it's all divine. Behind all the thoughts, here. The highly individualized soul, like you and I and many of the people listening to my voice right now, we are immortals passing through a beautiful construct that allows us to experience, to grow, to acquire all, all these lessons, to do things in a controlled environment like the holosphere that does not cross-contaminate the outside real universe. All this evil, all this violence and all that, this is within, within the holosphere. This is here. It's not on the outside of the construct. We come in, we come in here to experience these things because it's the only way an immortal can grow that we humans are the architects of this construct. And on the outside, we have agreed to come in to experience these things. From the perspective of living on the outside of the construct, we know everything that we suffer on the inside is an illusion. You are your own individual blossoming of the universal consciousness, and it's gonna be very unique to you. It's, it's really about the unfoldment of you and authentically unfolding that without expectations and without, you know, putting limits to what we allow to express through us. With this idea of energy and how it works through us, it's a very interesting experience of becoming that container of this universal life force energy, which is already working through us. Step-by-step -step improvements and development of our character, we, we raise our capacity to be able to take more of this energy in and flow it through us in a more of a less resistance kind of pattern. This is what's happening for me. Open yourself to become it. Only then does the whole thing fall into place. And there's nothing else to do. There isn't any other game in town. There's nothing you can offer me that holds a candle to this process. And in order to go this journey, you finally demand of yourself the discipline of body, heart, and mind. The quiet mind, that's why you meditate. The open heart, that's why you practice devotion. The strong body, that's why you concern yourself with your diet and your way in which you keep your body and maintain. Because when the spirit of the Spirit of God enters you. You have to be able to withstand the power and the intensity of love, the brightness, the blinding brightness that would wither you were you not prepared. And all of yoga is the preparation to in truth become the bride of God. That's what it's about. That's what this life is about. And only you know in your heart what you have to do because the spirit speaks through your innermost being. It doesn't speak through some guy up here. I'm speaking, you are hearing, each of you is hearing a different thing that you need to hear.
It is not for you to hear what I hear, it is for you to hear what you need to hear. Listen to your innermost voice no matter what anybody tells you about how it ought to be. When you break pattern, you absolutely tap into an immortal ability. The ability to build for yourself. The ability to create a world for yourself. Create armor. Create, create your spiritual weapons. Create the roads that you want to take when there was nothing but walls or barriers put there by the construct. When you break pattern, you confuse the construct. It has no idea what's going on. When you break pattern and do something totally different than you've ever done, as soon as you do that, you have opened up all kinds of worlds because the present is absolutely pregnant with possibilities. But we miss it every time because we're living the dictates of the construct, the things that have put, been put out there that we think we have to do every day. But when you break pattern and do something new, all of a sudden there's opportunities everywhere. You meet totally new people. You meet totally, you, you're thrust into absolutely new situations. And the construct is throwing all these carrots out there trying to get you to bite on something, trying to corral you back into a collective. But if you keep defying it, it will start giving you the very things that you want and making you happy so you don't contaminate the others. You have now become a virus and it will give you the things you want in life. It will make you happy. You'll, you'll, you'll fulfill your dreams. You'll do everything because it doesn't want you to spread what you know about breaking pattern to the others. Because there's a lot of division in the, in the truth of community, man. We need to end that shit. Because those who don't want to come together aren't a part of the community anyway. The truth should ultimately unite us. If it sounds clear and in harmony with your inner being, you tune to it. The minute there's a vibration in me that doesn't feel right, trust your heart. Don't trust me. You trust your own inner voice. There's nothing wrong with falling on your face if you just get up, brush yourself off, and get on with it. You get to the point in this game where everything in you that is keeping you from getting home, you say, forget it. You're looking at a map and every side road, no matter how pretty the mountains, if it's not getting you home, it doesn't interest you anymore. First rule, listen to your inner voice. The second rule, be honest with yourself. And you must be willing to stand naked as a newborn child again and again and again and again and again and again. The name of this game is Surrender. Surrender of who you think you are and where you think it all is over and over again. Truth and trust. And that trust in your inner voice is based on the faith that there is a divine law which guides you, of which you are part. You got to initiate the action to see who is ready for enlightenment. Christ says with two or more are gathered in my name, there I am. You gotta call me, then I come. That's the grace. The grace is drawn by you. But I'm ready to be counted. I am ready to stand naked before God. I am ready, I am ready now. I am ready to convert my life so the whole process is one of awakening. It's called the age of revealing and the age of awakening. Guide your heart closer to source. That's what it is. It is something that lives but never dies. It is born but never ceases. In other words, it is almost actually another name for the human soul. But whatever we call it, it is the victory, the inevitable victory of good over evil. It is the complete victory of faith over fear. It is the complete victory of virtue over vice. And it is achieved because it is potentially possible to the individual. And each human being is born with the potential of the perfection of truth within himself. He must become aware of truth, of the love of truth, of the love of God of, as truth. Deity recognized in the manifested form of the infinite parent, recognizing that the more of the internal comes out, the better the external will be. We must accomplish in ourselves the leadership that we expect to bestow upon others. If we want to see a better world, we must begin with the self. There is no loss. There can never be. There is only delay. There is only a moment of pause in what might otherwise be a great and glorious mission. Dedication to love of God, dedication to the recognition of the great power of redemption. The mind is a, is a wonderful servant. It's a terrible master. You know, the heart is the ultimate guide. Nature will never permit evil to survive. It will never permit the wrong to win. 
everything flows into everything else in a perfect rhythm of purpose. Therefore, there is never a moment in which we are not given the opportunity to grow, that we are forgiven for our mistakes if we did not know better. Or nor is there a moment when we cannot correct these mistakes and go on to something higher and more noble. The fact of the love of truth, the love of the way it really is, that the problem must be solved, that there can never be allowed for evil to survive, that never can ignorance prevail, never can violence destroy peace. And no matter what happens from that time on, truth will prevail in us. And that means that peace will take over. We must begin to realize that we were not born when we come here. We do not die when we go. We must do that if you right. And in this way, we gradually discover that there is a universe of intelligence, a universe of wisdom, a universe of good, a universe dedicated to the service of eternal truth, dwelling forever in the presence of the divine being. And these little tyrants who arise live for a day and disappear. And in the great passage of things, each of us, in our own way, must discover our own eternity. Fulfill the divine love of man for God. These things are all part of it. A wonderful mystery. Truth in a mystery. Love and wisdom in a mystery. Being together in truth and love. Being defined is a being confined. Let go of the labels. Letting your heart open to the formless, to the one that is formless. It's about who we are. That shift, you want the click. It's a key in a lock. I want that key to completely go into the lock, to embody the key in the lock, clicking into place. I want to live in a fully, completely and entirely experience the turning of that key till it clicks. I want to experience the whole shift. Mind projects our experience. Without mind, there is no experience. This is the, the waking dream. So what begins to happen is that we wake up to the dream, not from the dream. We don't wake up and leave the dream. But we also have the deep realization that, ah, this is a dream. This is the matrix. The space that's required to be, to allow ourselves to receive or allow ourselves to be activated. Something shifts, something changes you. Spontaneous evolution. But in order to experience that, we need space to connect, to resonate, to activate. You have to be still enough to allow that in, to allow that information in, allowing yourself the space to be activated, to receive frequencies. It's a key and a lock to change you. It's possible. What you and I are figuring out is the relation between the inside and the outside. And our work is both on the inside, that is to quiet our minds so they're not trapped by our thoughts all the time, and to open our hearts. And then on the outside, to do what you do as a result of that. Because the quieter you are, the more you see a part of everything. It's me, it's us. Useful things, it's like what Bruce Lee says, take what is useful, leave out what is useless. It's that awareness that brings you your truth more. And we don't know the true nature of the earth until we start exercising the true nature as humanity. We haven't seen heaven yet, because we've only been manifesting hell, generation after generation. We've been robbed. We will not legitimately know what heaven and paradise is like on this earth until we find it within. By changing ourselves, we become an inspiration to others. You're the main character in this movie. Mind and heart, reason and intuition, intellect and spirit must work together, for each alone is not enough. That is the first and most important key to transcending the Matrix control system. I think we're in the middle of a spiritual awakening, and I think the awakening will push towards truth, and I think that truth is always a good thing. Our choices are our portals. Because everything is allegory, everything is linked together. It's all about mastery in, in your awareness of the craft, mm. and it's all in the way we do things. Everything is the same. Everything is a tool. Now. The only thing divine, truly divine and new is creation. The things we create are creative expression of, of intention and perfecting a discipline. Through the creative process and through that mystery, my story, that we're, we're constantly unfolding and creating, it's beautiful. All of it chosen by our higher self. In the arrow, 
is our intention. And whether that shot is gonna hit target, it's gonna happen before we let that arrow go, that arrow of intention go. <laughs> it already hits the target before we let it go. You know what I mean? So we all have to align our intention, align our arrow perfectly before we let it go. Because once we let our words out of our mouth, once we let our creation out of our quiver to make sure that everything is intentional and purposeful before we express it, before we let this energy go into the collective, we're choosing our words wisely, say more with less. The more we build these simulations, the more clear we can show our brothers and our sisters, our perspective. The love of one's fate. Amor Fati, the love of one's fate. When you understand magnetism, when you open up that third eye, that crown chakra up, and you open up your imagination, that's the imagination. It's the, the inner eye when you see inside. When that opens up, everything really changes. And it's all in the power of the archetype and the metaphor and the meaning that you put behind it. Well, that, that is the, the kingdom of heaven lies within, isn't it? To free the mind through the heart. And meditation became salvation. Because in salvation, you're taken out of this imprisonment and you're shown what's real. Everyone is where they should be. Let it all be. It's a stage, it's a theater, it's the shadow of what's going on in the spiritual realms. As you raise your frequency and purify your soul, resonant frequency of yours goes to a realm suited, suited to that frequency. So if you're a beautiful person, you will go to a place where there are beautiful people. Right now, we are suspended within two realities. One of them is the collective. It is, it is those who are trapped in dungeon programming. They believe everything, the construct. They believe the entire scenario, the, wor the world, all the paradigms that the world has fed them. They believe this. They believe everything NASA says, everything the news says. I mean, these people here are a part of the collective. They have zero imagination. This is the collective. So we cannot remove the reality that we are spiritual beings and that we are vessels, that we are multidimensional. We can't stop that. What we can do is we can learn what these essences are and we can learn how to work with them and use them to transform ourselves. Are being cleared. These channels of the awareness of what you are, which is everything, is being turned on as you have the opportunity to take your masculine and your feminine side and bring them together now in true because you are going to need all of you. Ali El Payaso, he always says, inside out, always. Yeah. We are always, you know. And we truly are inside out. You, you can't get it from the outside. You've got to go from the inside out. Those who have awakened, you do have free will. It's because by living in two different realities, one is the highly personalized individual soul that can create their own world and live in the construct amidst all these people who are trapped in dungeon programming who look at you as an anomaly. But you get the things you need in life. You get the things you want. You excel. They see you excel and they don't understand because you don't follow the rules of the construct. Free will, a free willed co-creator. Genius is madness, you know cosmic intelligence to be present in the humans through some type of process where the energy expresses itself here and eventually the DNA ticks around the right way and you end up with knowledge. You end up with internal knowledge that never was created, never ended, never dies, never leaves, coming through people, pouring through people, and it's literally artwork and like a cosmic intelligence and knowledge. It's not informationally based, it is like some type of knowingness. It's basically self-knowledge, self-awareness, how you- You're here as a pilgrim. You're here as a sojourner. You are a prodigal son. You were never designed to save the construct. You're here to pass through it. And to pass through it, acquiring all the things that an immortal needs by virtue of your power. You're here to acquire intuition, imagination, 
empathy. How you feel and how you feel relates to the universe and how that corresponds to some higher intention that's knowledge and it never leaves. The knowledge of the self is never over, never ends, and it's never, it's never incomplete. Every single bit of it is always the intentions of a cosmic source stepping down into the, the human when there is that feeling and that feeling is being expressed through free will and harmony. We're, we're full when we're empty material. We're full spiritually when we're empty materialistically. And it's because we are the observer, clear and free from the impressions of the external world. Meaning, you don't have to be in the world, but you're not of it. We've heard that before. But the idea is that you realize, don't forget, you're just observing. Don't attach. It's, it's like a dream state. Be able to conceive it in our mind's eye, okay? Now. We are going to understand from from now on and forevermore is that the cosmos we live in is a beautiful creation of a very very intelligent primal cause the root cause of all causes this intelligence of beautiful form and omnipotence omniscience and omnipresence is everywhere a conscious being permeating all of the universe but the real journey of the hero is to self-actualize and self-transcend. All of reality contained in its creator, here and now, in a single instant. It's being in the presence of God and being able to stay there and love being there. There's, there's everything that's happening in the present moment. And there's this presence that, that doesn't change, that is always there and which you contact in some degree when contemplative prayer begins to be firmly established. That Christ essence within your heart, and you live from that place, it naturally dissolves all negative bonds. Lucifer is redeemed by being in service to humanity, to use the knowledge and inspiration that you receive to serve humanity, to serve others. Spirituality should be grounded, okay? Spiritual information, esoteric information, shouldn't be just floating around what I think, what I feel. They actually have to be grounded in very real things, in very real laws, in very real truths. Humanity has to transform matter into higher forms. That's why we came. We came here to transmute. And there's a sense of contentment that comes from doing the things you're supposed to do. It doesn't even, we, people say it's the journey, not the destination. That's true. Everything will be revealed in time look at what's going on around us you know we can easily say that this is due to heavy tyranny and i would believe that and i believe that but all of the tyranny all of the corruption all of the you know sick manipulations going on at the top none of that would exist if we had more spiritual awareness you know if we had more a greater sense of spirit in our life those kinds of things just wouldn't exist so you've got to start looking within yourself and the only vehicle known to man that allows you to look within yourself is that word called meditation perfection born into imperfection yes wow beautiful perfectly put exactly positively you feel the truth this is what the purpose of that stuff serves in something that's a contrast. It serves to show you, show you, well, this is also how that can be used. Let your heart and your mind become whole. Bring the polarities into the center. Self-aware, self-knowing, self-illuminating. That is, it knows itself by itself. Of exactly what the big secret is here. The big secret is us. We're universes no matter how long it takes us to figure that out. You have to understand it in terms of uh, as within, so without, as above, so below. Exactly what is within is being, is being pushed outwards. Whatever's above is below. That which is at the center causes everything that is without. It's not really that he heaven is the cause and earth is the effect. The ether is the cause. It's not like up there produced what is down here. It's what is in produced what is out. That's what it is. We all come from counter space, which makes up space. We all come from the interdimensional realm which gives us dimension. We come from pure information, which gives us formation. From interdimension, we have dimension. The biggest cult in the world is organized religion, simply because it doesn't allow people to think for themselves. From counter space, we take up space. From information, we have the form. I am not my body, which has formation. I am my soul, which is information. We meditate on these revelations 
about DNA. So what's so important about that? What's so important about that is you come in and we, we extol you to come in and to be in meditation here. And what are you doing? When you're in meditation, you're bringing light in from the outside. That the twisted ladder of DNA. This thing called God is the seed inside of you waiting to be opened and to flower. You can be one with this universal consciousness which is in all people. That DNA inside of you, power of a candle, but it sends out like coming from your body is a light. Coming from your body is a message, and it's the light coming from DNA. But let's take the other way around. Let's take from the universe. Let's take from what we call God. What about God light coming to you? The light coming to you then, the DNA of God entering into you, as opposed to the DNA of you entering into somebody else. It's a significant thing. In other words, is this what happens to us when we receive light from above? We're receiving God's DNA? And then when the DNA comes into the body, don't forget, understand what's being said here. It is the DNA from one source communicating with the DNA in you. It opens a whole new ball game, doesn't it? It, does, it means that you just have to get out of the way. You don't have to try to do anything in meditation. You just get out of the way and the DNA that enters in will communicate with the DNA in you. And it becomes very vital. It's a logical explanation. It is the first logical explanation of how this works. As individuals and as, as beings that are developing our I presence, our individuality, our sovereignty, we are bombarded by lies in this world, in this 3D world, and our challenge is to discern. The only way that we can discern is by developing Christ within ourselves. And when we develop that Christ essence within ourselves, when we notice it, just noticing it, when we feel it, when we study. The single eye is referred to as the body's light receptor. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye be single, your body will fill with light. And there's the reference to the single eye. There's the reference to the single eye. Your body will fill with light. God is light. Only through developing that Christ presence within us, our inner Christ consciousness, can we begin to notice the difference. It gives us that vision. It gives us that imprint, that consciousness, that essence that allows us to see clearly, to perceive.